and welcome to another episode of Ubar. In today's episode, we are going to write our first application using WebSockets with API Gateway. If you're interested in watching more content about serverless, cloud computing, or software engineer practices in general, subscribe to my channel in the red button below. I post a video every Tuesday, so let's get started. <laughs> I am so excited of having WebSockets finally supported in API Gateway. So in last reinvent in 2018, this was announced and this was made available by the end of the year. So I created for you a simple application using WebSockets, so the Hello World version of this. So we are going to build a chat application, but with these concepts, you will be later you'll be able to build all kinds of applications. So now you might be wondering why I am so excited about WebSockets. Why? Why the cool thing? So if you don't know what WebSockets are, WebSockets are a communication protocol that are bidirectional. So HTTP is the typical communication protocol so that we had available in API Gateway until uh, WebSockets was available, so it was the only option. And web, uh, HTTP is a one-way communication protocol, meaning that the client can ask information from the server, but the server cannot send information to the client whenever the server wants. But WebSockets is a different thing. So whenever a client connects to server, then the client can ask information from the server and the server can send information to the client whenever the server wants to. So, for example, I was super excited about AppSync because it allows real-time applications and now we can build our own GraphQL backend. We can put it on Lambda and use these WebSockets to create the applications with real-time. So that's a really great thing. So building this was, I think, a little bit of challenge for the guys of AWS because usually when you have a WebSocket a server, you used to have a server that was very stateful. So it knew everybody that was connected to it and then it was able to send the information back to the clients that were connected. Now that we don't have a stateful server, that we have stateless lambdas, then we need to have different ways of um, knowing who is connected and who is not. And I will show you one approach in this video, a very simple one, but it's very useful for knowing who is connected to our application. So before going on, I will talk a little bit about the basic concepts you need to know when working with API Gateway WebSockets and also what we are going to build in this application. So let's go to my slides and get this started. So the first thing we need to know is what is a route. A route is an important concept that we need to know in API Gateway. It means how API Gateway should handle a particular type of client request. A WebSocket API is composed of one or more routes. There are three special route keys that API Gateway will provide for us, but we don't need to use them all and we can always add our own special keys. So we have the default one that is used when uh, there is nothing else that matches this. So basically we can use it to handle errors and things like that. Then we have the connect, that is a route associated when a client connects to the WebSocket API and the disconnect is also when a client disconnects from this API. In this video, as I said, we are going to build the Hello World application of WebSockets and that is a simple chat app. Our application will be a chat app with a couple of lambdas that whenever a client connects, and since a message, it will be broadcasted to everybody that is connected to the application. Our application is serverless, so our Lambda is stateless. It doesn't know who is connected and who is not. So to keep track of all the connected devices, we are going to use the DynamoDB table where we are going to add and remove all the devices that they are connected and disconnected from the chat. We are going to build this application fully as infrastructure as code as always, and we are going to use serverless framework. And for doing that, we are going to use a plugin and I will leave the description of the plugin in the description box of this video, because there are some things you need to know if you want to use this plugin in production. Hello, it's Marcia from the future. So I recorded this video like a couple of weeks ago and I put it in my backlog. Okay, it's ready. And now three days before the video goes live, the guys from Serverless Framework release a new version of the framework, the 1.38, that supports WebSockets, so you don't need the plugin. The good thing is that this video is not 
crap, <laughs> everything works, and I will do some changes. The changes will be pointed at the end of the video, and they're really, really small changes that you need to do to your serverless YAML in order to make this work with the latest version without the plugin. So you will hear from Marcia of the future at the end of the video when we go over our serverless YAML and see what we need to remove. So as always, let's get started with creating a new directory for our project. We are going to call it WebSocket Chat. And inside that directory, we will create a new serverless project using the Node.js template. As always, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I recommend you to go to my playlist serverless 101 and you will know what I'm doing here. We open this with Visual Studio Code. I have abandoned Apton for now, so I'm really hooked with Visual Studio Code. So you will see me coding in the future in this editor. I clean up the comments so we can get started in the serverless YAML. And the first thing we are going to do is to add the serverless plugin we are going to use. I leave you the link for this plugin in the description box. We are going to install it and then we can use it to create all the routes that we need for our application. So it's pretty straightforward and we can add that to uh, our project, install that plugin. If you want to know more about serverless framework plugins, I also created a playlist about them. I have not talked there about this one, but I have talked about other plugins and what plugins are in general. So I'll leave you the card as well so you can check it out. So after plugin install, we are going to get started with our functions. We are going to create three functions. The first one is the connection handler. Then we are going to create a default handler. And then we are going to create a send message handler. The connection handler, we have two root keys. If you can see there, we have the events and now we don't have HTTP anymore. We have WebSocket. And there we have the root keys that we need to know in order to direct the traffic. So we have two root keys in the connection handler. We can have as many as we want. And one is connect and the other one is disconnect. The default handler has the root key that is the default. And then we will have another one, the send message that we have a root key that is the send message root key. So now we can go to our handler.js and start working on our connection handler. We are going to remove everything that is in the uh, template because we are not going to use that. The first thing I recommend you to do is to print the event so you know what is inside. It's pretty interesting to see the event type. As you know, every event that uh, triggers Lambda is different. So if it's triggered by an HTTP or is triggered by a WebSocket or is triggered by Dynamo or whoever triggers Lambda, they have different events. So I recommend you to take a look what is inside the event so you know what is the power and what you can do with it. So now uh, we are inside the event, we have this request context and we have the event type. So we know if the event type is connect, then we will handle the connection. And if the event type is disconnect, we are going to handle the disconnection. So as simple as that. We will call a method called add connection that we will create in a moment. And basically we are passing to that the connection ID that we also can get it in the request context. And if everything goes fine, it returns a successful response. And if not, it just returns an error. We will do the same for the disconnection. It's the same, but just we are going to call this method delete connection. And what these methods do? So basically, as we said in the architecture diagram, we are going to have a table, a DynamoDB table, that we have all the connections that are right now. So basically, when someone connect, it will store the connection ID. And when someone disconnect, it will remove the connection ID. So we are going to create this table that has only one field and is the uh, connection ID. So uh, also one thing to notice here, if you can see the billing mode, it says paper request. So I have uh, created this table that it has an, a serverless DynamoDB table. So basically it will just uh, increment or decrement the capacity of the table depending on the request that we have. This is great for these examples because we don't know what is the requirement capacity that we need. So we just increment it and decrement it whenever we need it. So this is how you do it. It's pretty straightforward. You don't need to provision a read or write uh, amount anymore. Before we used to put one on one, but now we just put paper request. So we give permissions to it for our Lambda to access it. And then we start adding those methods. The add connection, 
adds the connection ID to this table and I could pass that as an environmental variable but I didn't but if you want to know how to use environmental variables I have a playlist about that already so you should go and check it out but I'm lazy here and I'm not doing it that way. So now the add connection will require us to import the AWS library and the Dynamo document client and when we do the delete connection it's exactly the same but instead of adding uh, putting there we are just deleting. Our connection handler is done and the default handler basically won't be doing much it's just basically returning the message and that's usual as I said use in cases that uh, we are managing errors or doing something but in our case we are not doing much so let's add the send message handler that is doing all the magic and this message handler has the root key send message so whenever there is this um, send message root key then this lambda will get triggered and what this lambda does it sends the message to everybody that is connected to our application so good so we created the handler there and then it sends a message to everybody that is connected. We pass the event and if everything is right, then we send the 200 and if not, we shall send an error. So let's create the method send message to all the connected. The first thing we want to do is to get all the connections ID and then from all the connections ID, we are going to send a message to all of them. So the connections ID we get by basically scanning the table for everybody that is there and we return um, array of connections ID that we will need in order to send so we need those to send this message the send method is the one that does all the magic so let's take a look at it the first thing that happens is that we are going to parse the body and get the post data so that's the message data that we want to send so if we pass hello world then the event will have a body and the body will have data and that's what we care. The next thing we are going to do is to generate the endpoint that we want to send this message to and the endpoint we can get it also from the event with the domain name and the stage and we get them like that. Then we need to uh, create this uh, object the API management API and this is something that is new is from the version 2018-1129 I will leave you the link for this documentation for this document in the description box. So then we configure this object API Gateway Management API, we pass the endpoint and then we are able to post to that connection. So basically we will pass the connection ID and the information we want to post and that will send the message to that. So we need to repeat that for every um, resource that is connected. We need also to give permissions to Lambda to send messages to these uh, connections. So that's what we are doing there. By the time I'm making this video, uh, AWS Lambda is not totally updated with the latest version of AWS SDK. So we are going to require this um, and this is important and we can install it in our project. So then we are not getting errors. We need to install the AWS SDK. I hope this gets fixed soon, but for now we need to do this. So we can call the API gateway management thingy that is pretty new. And now we deploy our project as always. I will speed this up and we can see what happens when this is deployed. Now it's deployed. We can see that there is this URL at the end. That is the WebSockets URL and it's Instead of say HTTPS, it says WSS and then a URL. It also has that identifier of the API gateway and then it has the region and then the stage. So it's a very familiar API. So in order to use this, we cannot use Postman anymore. So we need to install a tool called WSCAT that will allow you, us to do WebSocket connection. So we install it our computer so we can run these connections so now we can uh, call that url and see what happens to call the url we do ws cat and then we do minus c and we put that url that we get and then we are connected so now we can also run the same command in another terminal so we have two clients connected to our server and we can send a message so to send a message what we need to do is to send this json we send the action with the root key send message and then we send the data and that will broadcast this message to everybody that is connected. If we put an action that is not there, it will, will call the default uh, handler 
and it, nothing will happen. So we can see that hello world appear in our terminal and then we can write something in here and hello serverless and these appear as well here and we can write hello world one and two and this appears everywhere. So this is pretty nice and simple way to create your hello world application. Now we can go to Dynamo and see the chat table and we can see that we have one, one client connected. Now we connect the other one and we have two. And whenever they disconnect, we will see that uh, they disappear from there. So now we have done our code and the thing, first thing we want to remove is the plugin. We don't need it anymore. The next thing we need to do is to remove this road key and replace it with road because that's what the specification says. And that's it. We don't need to do anything else. It's super simple. So everything we have done works. Then you deploy and when you deploy, you will see that everything as always. And then at the end, you will see that the endpoint appear in the endpoints where the API gateway endpoints go. And then you can connect to it and start sending messages. So everything we've done works. The GitHub code, I will update it with this last uh, version without the plugin. So you can see in the different commits of the GitHub the changes but in the last commit it should be the one without the plugin this was the video for today i hope you like it if you did give a big thumbs up if you want me to check other kind of applications using websockets and api gateway and lambda let me know in the comment box below so we can experiment together and remember that around here there are other videos from my channel for you to watch so go ahead and check them out and if not i see you in the next episode of Fubar. ciao ciao